Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, I'm Ken at Republic. So Republic is in a platform that enables legal token distribution in the U.S. to both accredited and non-accredited investors. So from token sale to airdrops to minings to bounty programs, uh, people go through it to be compliant with U.S. securities law. We launched about two years ago, uh, funded by AngelList, and recently we raised a round led by Binance Labs and with participation from FBG Capital. So I'm both excited and grateful to have the conversation today with Ella Jang, uh, head of Binance Labs, and Vincent Cho, a founder of FBG Capital. Uh, I'll do a quick introduction uh, uh, of Vincent and Ella's background, uh, and then we'll dive right in. So uh, Vincent started out as Oracle and IBM, and back in 2014, apparently decided to trade crypto part-time with $10,000. In a year, that became $100,000, so he quit his job and started trading full-time. Then he assembled a group of friends and turned it into a pool. And in early 2017, amassed some $20 million. And then within one year of that, grew that into $200 million. Toward the end of 2017, uh, named the group FBG Capital. And today, FBG is one of the largest crypto asset managers in the world uh, with investments from marquee names like Sequoia Capital. Truly an amazing feat. Thank you for being here, Vincent. Turns out, Ella went to college with Vincent, though had a distinctly different uh, career path. Uh, she was previously at Google, spent four years as investment director at Kleiner Perkins, then decided to spend two more years at Stanford and earn her MBA, and after that joined Binance to head Binance Labs. So Binance Labs is the investment arm of the exchange Binance, and under which there's a $1 billion investment fund as well as in an incubator. Uh, thank you so much, both of you, for taking the time to be here. I gotta say that uh, in the past six months, as I get to know Ella and the team, uh, I've been truly inspired and I really admire their long-term commitment and uh, you know, just vision for a long-term ecosystem that's inclusive, impactful, and fair for, for everyone without, without border. So first and foremost, you guys went to college together. Did you ever expect to, to be doing what you are doing today? And did you expect to be in the same space as one another? No, I never. Hello? I never expected that. And uh, there, actually, we graduated many years after we graduation. Uh, graduated many years. Um, I met Vincent. I, I uh, call him senior alum by default, but it turns out we're from the same year. <laughs> Lots older. <laughs> um, Ella and Vincent, can each of you share a little bit more about your respective uh, fund organization uh, and what you've been investing in? Okay, lady first. Uh, so Lab Binance Labs is an initiative of um, Binance to um, incubate and invest and uh, empower blockchain and crypto uh, founders um, uh, projects and a community. So we are pretty much uh, early stage investment arm that we focus, uh, we do three business, uh, incubation direct investment and uh, also ecosystem fund. Incubation is pretty much a focus on founders uh, who has idea at a very early stage. We help them to bootstrap and bring them to uh, the cri uh, critical resources. And the direct investment, we uh, go to uh, invest those early stage but ongoing projects. And the fund of fund business, uh, we invest in uh, the, the, the fund, crypto funds, which we identify GPs have the shared value system with us and long-term vision with us, but probably have different uh, investing strategy uh, from, from us. So that are the three dimensions that we do. And is that a completely unrelated to the exchange, or is there a near-term or long-term uh, intention between the portfolio of Binance Labs and activities on, on the parent company? I think um, it's, uh, the impact will, um, will, we will make the impact in long-term 
perspective, because uh, right now, as every, everyone knows, probably uh, exchange is the biggest uh, application of blockchain and crypto, uh, but exchange business itself will thrive based on the thrive of the whole industry. So that's our goal, that um, to help the whole industry to thrive in that way, Binance will for sure become the one of the best players in this area. And uh, about a month ago, there was a uh, tech crunch announcement of the, uh, of the incubation uh, lab. Uh, and recently, uh, I believe that you have selected uh, the project. Uh, can you share a little bit more about the selection process? Yes, that uh, we are very excited about our incubation program. Actually, we just had our opening day for our first season of incubation uh, yesterday in San Francisco. Uh, we launched this program uh, about two months ago, and within a month, we received uh, over 100, uh, 100, uh, 500 applications, and we carry out about 50 interviews, and uh, uh, in the end, we pick up eight very, very, very strong team, and we call them build builders. So we help them. Um, it's a 10 weeks program. We support them to build all, uh, during the 10 weeks and uh, we will carry out our builders day in December that will invite some uh, investors to join us to see their demos we are very exciting about them and, and one more question before we uh, turn to, uh, to FBG here um, so Y Combinator recently announced that they changed their terms a bit and now investing $150,000 on a 7% uh, you know, valuation uh, on a 7% 70, 70 uh, equity piece in the company. Would you be able to share a bit more about the terms uh, that Binance Lab is investing into these portfolio companies or is that still not confidential or not public yet? I think we have a pretty generous term uh, investing 500K uh, in the uh, founders um, get 10% of the ownership of the company. Did I hear it right? $500,000 for only 10%? 10% is pretty big uh, in a crypto project. We definitely don't want to dominate uh, the project. We want to support the project become a distributed um, project that uh, have a lot of source resources to help them. So we think 10% is the maximum. That's incredible. Uh, Vincent, would you mind uh, sharing a bit more about uh, FBG's uh, strategy uh, in terms of investing in early stage as well as trading uh, more actively uh, in the more mature tokens? Uh, when we launched the uh, fund and uh, we tried, we talked to investors, we will find the next Bitcoin, next Ether. So this is the purpose why we have a fund. Uh, so uh, we try to um, find the um, uh, next big things and uh, become the early back, and we'll continue to support the, the project. This is a, uh, this is a big uh, investment principle. Um, <laughs> How do you navigate when, on the one hand, um, I know that, that I think in one of uh, recent press pieces that you had mentioned that some 50% of uh, FBG's profit had been generated from, from active trading activities. And then on the other hand, you make a very early stage investment into early stage projects that may be a year or two away from liquidity. Uh, are you predicting a shift over time? Uh, in, in one direction or another? Uh, some other people maybe have a misunderstanding of our strategy. <laughs> and uh, we just uh, traded the big, uh, big, uh, uh, trade all on big uh, coins, just the Bitcoin and Ether. We did not trade uh, these, uh, these more wanted coins. So, um, um, so this is totally different strategies. And uh, we, uh, we try, as, uh, as uh, everyone know, in, if you are in the industry for a long time, you know the, uh, this, the, pr the price up and down. And, uh, uh, so for a fund, I think the most important thing is you need to survive in this high uh, uh environment. You like to have a long-term vision for, as I think a lot of people have long-term vision in this space, but uh, the key is you need to survive to, to that, uh, 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 that, 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 that time. So for us, our training in the Bitcoin Ether is to help us to have that kind of 
uh, can generate a, uh, continuous uh, capital to support in the, in, the, in the early stage project. This is our purpose. Uh, since you mentioned uh, you know, Ethereum and Bitcoin, I just have got to ask, do you think we've seen the bottom of it? Uh, or, or, uh, or is it still a little bit longer uh, in terms of like, the, uh, the law? Um, as an investor, I would always say it will be up and soon. But uh, as a professional trader, I think uh, it's, it's on a particular uh, future market price. This is... Uh, uh, <laughs> um, when we talk about active trading, it's hard not to touch on securities implication, uh, particularly in the U.S. Uh, and I'm sure in other countries as well. As um, securities law come to apply and certainly apply to trading activities, has that impacted uh, the business at all, uh, certainly in the way that you trade, uh, or, or has it been, FBG has been somewhat agnostic to, to legal development? Uh, for the fund uh, training, I think in general, okay, I think uh, and, and what, are, what are the differential from us and other career fund, it, especially we are, we are the same. Uh, other career fund, uh, they are uh, still need to buy and sell Bitcoin ether, just like us, but we, maybe we have, have, uh, have, have currency. So this is, I think, this, this kind of uh, regulation applies to all the career fund, not just us. Amazing. Uh, Ella, going back to you. So. Uh in evaluating both for the incubator as well as direct investment from, from the fund, what type of projects or technologies or industry are you more excited about now compared to before? Compared to before? Uh, compared in terms to six of months ago, say. Yep. Well, <laughs> Republic is very fortunate to be one of the first few companies that receive an investment from Binance Labs. Um, but, you know, it's been three, four months, and uh, that's a, a long time in crypto. So has, your, has the mandate or the attention of the team changed uh, in the past few months? Yeah, it, uh, it does change. Um, um, but so where we focused on previously, we still focus on that. That is uh, infrastructure of the, the whole industry, where um, we focus on certain categories uh, in terms of the scalability of the chain, the security, um, the usability um, of the uh, entrance, like wallet, and the regulatory related platform like Republic and also the stability of the tokens in terms uh, which is uh, mainly focused uh, focus on a stable coin which we we think are the main categories that have a big problem uh, that block the whole industry to uh, to to move forward um, but after six months I um, I think we think more towards the real usability, um, the real use cases of blockchain and crypto, because um, if you think about the current market cap of 200 billion, it's very, very small um, versus the traditional capital market. The whole industry, if we want the whole industry to be successful, we definitely need the real use cases, which can cause the mass adoption of crypto to push out the boundary and increase the pie. So I think our focus at one more category, which is the, uh, the application layer. Can you name one project that's currently not in your portfolio, but you personally, you know, are paying some attention to? Or like? Well, uh, most the highest profile application so far is still CryptoKitties. Um, uh, we like the, the founders, uh, we met them several times, but still um, CryptoKitties still have a limited uh, daily uh, DA use. Um, also, recently it's a very, very hard project. Um, um, the three, uh, the foremost 3D. We like it, but uh, we kind of have some concern as an uh, organization to invest it. But uh, those are the creative idea to support uh, those crypto adoption. Um, also, the idea like Handshake, 
and we really like that project. Uh, it's a decent project that uh, enabled the distribution of DNS. And uh, some projects like that, we, we think will benefit the, the ecosystem in long term. Amazing, Vincent, uh, projects, technologies that, uh, that you're paying attention to these days? Right now? Yeah, like what was your, on your radar? And uh, right now, and uh, um, to be frank, uh, to be honest, and, and a lot of, uh, and we did not invest the DApp, uh, to, to be frankly. And uh, um, we are still active looking for the technology. Uh, if you see the uh, APG project investing, we all uh, invest in, uh, in the technology and uh, in the protocols. And uh, I think most of them will die, will, will become zero in, in the near future. Uh, but I trust that some of them will be surviving in the in the in the long term. So um, uh, right now, um, uh, right now, uh, uh, and right now, I, I think we are still uh, very exciting for some project already. In, um, already in, uh, have their mainnet or already have their uh, testnet something out, not just their uh, ideas, yeah. Uh, and Ella, stable coin, I mean, the, the potential market for that is vast, but it's a very crowded space, and Gemini just announced its own stable coin as well. Uh, how did you decide to pick one over the other ones? Um, so there, uh, there are many, many projects going on, but uh, they are not uh, all the same. So those ones, uh, Gemini uh, stablecoin, you mentioned they are the fully collateralized um, model, and they are also collateralized with uh, crypto um, assets. Also another uh, model, it's an uh, uncollateralized model. Um, I think all those um, initiatives are trying to enable the mass adoption of uh, cryptos, uh, currencies, and uh, they are focused on different regions. Like the recently we invest in Terra, um, which is a, a stable coin focused on, on e-commerce. Uh, it uh, started from Southeast Asia uh, area. Um, and we think the founders, who is a, a previous founder of the biggest uh, uh, e-commerce platform in Korea, um, uh, uh, um, then we think they have the right resources and experience to maybe um, uh, create a stable coin based on what they have. Um, that's why we invest in Terra, which have completely different thesis from the other stable coins. You know, and let's move from uh, technology and sector to uh, location, geography. Um, your investment strategy, are you agnostic as to where projects or applications come from, or are you focusing mainly in a couple, um, you know, jurisdictions? No, um, our uh, investment focus is uh, global. Um, we look into, so what we care, we care about the founders and the team and uh, uh, what drives them to do the project, their long-term commitment, and also their capability to achieve what they want to achieve, and also their use cases, which is, means their go-to-market strategy, which is uh, um, uh, the way that they can like bring their project to be successful. Not, not necessarily focus on like a few jur jurisdictions, but it's more about uh, the go-to-market strategy. Is that uh, the same at FBG Capital? Uh, we invest uh, in, um, everywhere, and uh, it, especially in the US, uh, Korea, and China, from China, China founders. Um, and also we are um, looking for some project from Berlin. Maybe this four place, and we are uh, spend a lot of time. And uh, we we have courage. We have local people carry for all, for all the courage. Uh, China is arguably the biggest market. Um, how should we be thinking about China from the investor perspective as well as the founder perspective? Uh, regulations here is conservative in the application of securities law, but there is outright illegal. I I heard. Um, can you share your insight? 
So I'm from China, Vince, uh, Vincent's from China. We know that um, uh, community is a very vibrant community there, and they do have, uh, have a, a lot of amazing founders who are focused on uh, building. Um, we see there are a lot of innovative innovations come out uh, in that community. At the same time, uh, China does have uh, the most strict policy to ICOs. So, um, so founders, entrepreneurs, they have to take a balance how they want to firstly distribute their coins, uh, their utility tokens to bootstrap their um, their, pro their projects. There do, um, there, there, I think there, there are many, many ways um, to um, bootstrap other than ICOs. So we still, um, I, I personally still bullish on um, uh, China community. Awesome. Vincent? And uh, from the coin market cap, the China founders still dominated the high, high uh, uh, dominated the rank in the, in the so, uh, my personally, I like China founders, but right now it's a challenge for them to uh, how to just like as I said, how to balance the uh, how to um, balance uh, uh, the, the, uh, the China and the outside of China, the, the community development and a lot of things. It's, it's, it's right now it's harder for them. Um, it's not easy for them to, to success right now. But it's I think I think about uh, the China. You know, they are working very hard and uh, very smart. I think they find some ways to success in this space. You know, for companies that are lucky enough to uh, get your confidence in investment, uh, what would you say, respectively, Binance Labs and FPG Capital, uh, that you bring to these companies beyond just capital? What's the value add proposition? Okay, for for Binance, um, it's uh, I think one of the most obvious um, benefit um, most of the founders see is uh, liquidity. Um, that Binance can provide, but that is actually the point that we want to make it very clear that invest in Binance Labs doesn't guarantee listing. Um, we do educate our founders that um, it's not guaranteed and uh, you have to really reach the criteria of listing team. And the Binance Labs, what Binance Labs can do is uh, to be the communication it, the, the, the breach uh, to communicate uh, with, uh, to help them improve the quality to reach the criteria of listing. Um, but this is a point we want to minimize the signaling power in the whole investing world. We, we are very cautious about that. Um, but, but I think, um, so the, very special thing is that our strategy is long only, uh, no short. So it's uh, thanks to the vision uh, of the founder, CZ, he really have a long-term vision and belief in the crypto and blockchain space. So any project that we invest in, we deeply hope that assets, we can hold it for 10 years. We don't want, we, we probably will be the last one to sell your shares or tokens among all the external uh, investors. So by choosing Binance Labs, you are choosing a long-term partner which is going to stand by you, support you, help, we, help you on uh, uh, talents recruiting, um, help you to design the token economy, and help you to, um, uh, to bring you any resources and help that you need during your entrepreneurial journey. What about you, Vince? And uh, first, uh, FPG already built a, a global network for the, uh, <laughs> we know the different uh, regional uh, developer community and who help the founders to uh, uh, one stop to uh, uh, can touch all the resources. And uh, also, uh, the, um, we, uh, beside, uh, beside the capital, we also have another two, two brands. Uh, one provide a training advice service uh, for these uh, foundations, and also we have uh, FPX, new, new city for the, uh, for cooperate with this project. Uh, so we continue, uh, in the early stage, we, uh, we, we invest in this, uh, in, in the team. If the team have already have a high, a good performance in the market, we can continue to support, cooperate with them. So this is, this is the reason uh, some of the project matured us. Yeah. 
And from the perspective of a portfolio company of both, I can say that both uh, Vincent and Ella and their teams have been tremendously uh, valuable to Republic in the past six months. You know, I have like another 10,000 questions, uh, but we're almost running out of time. So I have one last quick question. If you have to speculate a year from now, what would be the price of Bitcoin? Uh, today is roughly 65, 6,800. Ella, you want to go first? I'm very conservative. I think it, it will probably be the same. Well, Vincent? I don't know. I, I did not put in market price. <laughs> but if you just have to like, just guess, wow guess. You don't have to be like Tim Drapers and like bet anything on it. Just, you know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much, though, to both of you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Thanks, Kendry. Thanks, Thank Risa.